Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum score of a good subarray. We're given an integer array nums and an integer k. For a subarray, so a good subarray in this array is defined as any subarray that includes this index. So this is index zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three. So any subarray that includes the value seven. So seven itself, maybe these two, maybe these three, et cetera, et cetera. And for any particular subarray, we can calculate the score of that subarray by taking the width of that subarray. So like this has three elements, so the width is three, and by taking the minimum element and multiplying it by the width. So for just this subarray, the score would be seven times one. For this subarray, it would be four times two because four is the minimum element and the width is two. Maybe for this subarray, it would be three times three because there's three elements here and the minimum now is three. How can we solve this problem efficiently? And by solve, I mean basically return the maximum possible score of a good subarray. Well, it's a bit easier than you might think, actually. First of all, every value in this array is guaranteed to be positive, so that's good to know. We're never going to have like any negative values to deal with. But conceptually, you might start off by trying a greedy solution. You might think to take two pointers, initialize them to the edges, and then be greedy. When when I say greedy, I mean like right now we're trying to maximize the width of like the subarray. We're trying out all values. Now, for us to do that, though, we're going to have to find the minimum among all of these values. And then we could actually try something which is similar to another famous leak code problem, container of water, I believe it's called. And that is by being greedy, by taking our pointer and shifting it intelligently. We know we're trying to maximize the score. So when we are deciding which pointer now to shift, we should probably shift the one that has a smaller value. And that's almost exactly like container of water. Now, the only problem with this approach is that for us to calculate the score of the subarray, we are going to have to repeatedly find the minimum element in the subarray. That's not going to be efficient. This is going to lead to an n squared solution. So we're just going to make a very, very small variation of this solution. This is a medium problem, by the way. We're going to make a very small variation, and that is why not just, why instead of starting at the edges, why not just start at k itself? So in a way, we're still going to try to be greedy, but we're doing things a bit opposite. We know we have to include this integer anyway. So what we're now trying to do is we're trying to find the subarray with a max score where the length is one. That's pretty trivial because we have to include this element. So this is going to be the max score when the array is of length one. But now if we want to find the max score where the length of the subarray is two, how do we do it? Again, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Which one should we go to? Should we go to the smaller value or the larger value? Probably the larger value, right? So we take these two. Now, this is the part that takes a bit of intuition or explaining to understand. How do we now know that we still have two choices to expand our array? We want to find the array that has a max score where the length of the subarray is three. How do we do it? Well, it's simple. We would again just choose the one that has a small, a larger value. We'd want to include the five rather than the three. But how does that guarantee that we're always going to be finding the max array? Because Yes, maybe we can make a sacrifice here by including the three, even though it's a smaller value. And maybe that will pay off for us because maybe there's a big boy over here that's like, instead of being four, maybe this is like 10. So in a way, maybe it's going to pay off. Maybe we can sacrifice the smaller value for us to eventually get to a subarray of size four, and that includes a bigger value. Well, does it really matter how big this boy is? If we have a small value here, it really doesn't because remember our bottleneck is always going to be the minimum value. So that's the intuition of why we can even do this. But other than that, 
the problem is pretty straightforward. It's really that simple. You start at the kth element, you keep expanding either left or right, always favoring the larger values. And this is going to be a greedy solution. And that's kind of what makes this a difficult problem. Greedy problems are usually pretty difficult because they're always very, very different. But this solution will lead us to an O of N time complexity solution, O of one space solution, because we're just going to have two pointers, our left and right pointer. We're going to keep expanding them. If we get to a point, suppose that our left pointer is here, it's at the edge, then in that case, we're just going to be expanding the right pointer and vice versa. Okay, now let's code this up. So I'm going to initialize our two pointers left and right and set them both equal to K. I'm going to have a result which initially is just going to be the value at index k and i'm going to uh, maintain what the current minimum is so far for us to be able to compute the score that's also going to be the number at index k now we're going to be looping we're going to loop while the two pointers are both or at least one of the pointers is inbound because we want to go through every uh, possibility we want to at the end have both of the pointers be at the edges of the array so while left is greater than zero or right is less than the length minus one. If at least one of these are inbound, we're going to continue. Now for us to get the value, the left value, we're gonna just get nums at left minus one because we're trying to choose which of these are we going to now include. We wanna find the one that's larger. Now, why am I doing left minus one and right plus one? Because we initially started at K, we are considering these two candidates. Now. We don't actually know that both of these pointers are not at the edges. It could be possible that left is equal to zero. And in that case, we'd get an out of bounds error here. And it could be possible that right is equal to length plus or length minus one. And we get an out of bounds error here. Now, the way I'm going to fix that is by using a ternary operator. So if left is greater than zero, then it's going to evaluate to this else we're going to set it to a default value of zero same thing down here if right is less than length minus one then set it to this else set it to zero the reason we can get away with this by setting these to a default value of zero is because we know every value in this array is positive if that wasn't guaranteed we'd probably set this to negative infinity or something like that but now it's going to be pretty straightforward we're just going to compare is the value is the left value greater than the right value or is the opposite true if the left value is greater we're going to choose that value so we're going to take our left pointer and then shift it and we're going to shift it to the left by one so we're decrementing it in the opposite case we take our right pointer increment it by one which is basically shifting it to the right now we do need to now recompute what the possible minimum is at this current point since we just added a new value at this left index we should consider that the current minimum might have changed so we have to uh, potentially update it like this so current minimum now here we could either say nums at left or we could just say the left value that we got earlier it'll work in both cases since they're literally the same value this is left minus one and now we decremented it so we could uh, put nums of left here as well but i'm gonna just copy and paste this because the other condition is going to be the same except this is going to be right now you can probably guess what the thing we have to do now is, and that's possibly update our result. So we do that pretty simply. Since we're trying to maximize this, we're going to set it to either the max of itself or we're going to compute the score of the current subarray. Do you remember how to do that? Well, it's by taking our current minimum and multiplying it by the length of the subarray, which is right minus left plus one. So that's pretty much the whole solution. Let's return the result now and run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.